Hi, Doc Rivers here, and in this video I will show you a quick approach to writing net ionic equations. A net ionic equation is a chemical equation for a reaction that lists only the ionic species that form a solid precipitate. I'll show you how to write the net ionic equation by using examples. My approach to writing the net ionic equation is to start with the solid precipitate. So here we show you a solid precipitate, silver chloride. Next, simply draw the arrow. The third step is very important. The key here is to look at the solid and choose the negative portion of the solid in this case the chloride ion, and write it. So we write chloride minus 1. Now why is that important? That is important because in most general chemistry net ionic equations, the negative part of the compound tends to be the one that's easiest to determine the charge. In this case chloride, group 17, it's always a negative 1. That means that the positive ion must be a plus one. So in this case, the net ionic equation is silver plus plus chloride minus. Notice also that when we write each ionic species, we must also make sure that it's balanced. In the case of silver chloride, we only have one chloride, one silver, it's balanced. So this is the net ionic equation for the formation of silver chloride. Notice that we were able to do this without knowing the molecular compound. We'll show you how to consider the molecular compound now. So let's look again at the net ionic equation. We can then look at an example of what a molecular equation might look like. In this case, the reaction of silver nitrate plus sodium chloride would give a precipitate of silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. Notice that soluble species are always represented with an AQ. In this case we have aqueous silver nitrate plus aqueous sodium chloride giving us a precipitate of sodium chloride plus a soluble sodium nitrate. Again AQ represents a soluble species in the equation. So this represents the molecular equation. So how about the total ionic equation? We show you this by taking each soluble species and splitting it into each of its ionic species. So for every AQ we have an ionic species. We can then take this total ionic equation and eliminate the species, the ionic species, noted by AQ, that do not precipitate a silver chloride. And that leaves us with the net ionic equation. This approach is a classical approach that appears in most textbooks. However, note that we were able to obtain a net ionic equation without even knowing the original molecular equation. Let's take another example. Lead to iodide is a solid. It will form as a precipitate in certain reactions. So we write the solid, then we write the arrow, next we write the negative charge ion and note that we have two iodine molecules therefore we write a 2 in front of the I minus and it's AQ because it's soluble and then we write the positive to balance out the charges would be plus 2 for lead and it's AQ because it's soluble and this gives us our net ionic equation for lead to iodide. Notice that the atoms are balanced and the charges are balanced. 
So this would be the net ionic equation for lead to iodide regardless of which molecular formula it came from. So let's just show you an example of a molecular formula. In this case, we would have a balanced equation of two moles of potassium iodide plus lead to nitrate, both noted with AQ, meaning that they're both soluble, giving us the solid precipitate, lead to iodide, noted by the solid, plus two molecules, two moles, of potassium nitrate, AQ, meaning that it is aqueous, it is soluble. We could then write out the total ionic equation as we show you here. And then if we eliminate the spectator ions, spectator ions are those that do not participate in forming a precipitate. So we eliminate them and we're left with the original net ionic equation that we show you without knowing the molecular equation. So a key principle here is that you can write net ionic equations without knowing the original molecular equation. However, let's finish this by showing you the classical approach where a molecular equation is given. From that molecular equation, we will follow the same process, write the solid with the arrow, and then take the solids, write the negative charge species, which is typically a standard, a well-known charge ion. In this case, it's CO3 minus 2. Therefore, magnesium must have a plus 2. So this is the net ionic equation. Just to show you another example, we have the classical molecular equation. In this case, we have strontium bromide, AQ, that means both the strontium and the bromide are soluble, plus soluble potassium sulfate, because it's noted by AQ, giving us a precipitate of strontium sulfate, we know that because it's solid, plus two moles, two molecules of potassium bromide AQ, meaning that both the potassium and the bromide are ions in the solution. The net ionic equation for this, if we start with the solid, we have the solid strontium sulfate with the arrow. We know that sulfate is a negative component at a minus 2. So we write it. That's the standard. And it's AQ. Therefore, the positive ion is strontium at a plus 2. So we have both electronic neutrality and we have atom balance. It's important to note that we start with the negative ion. Starting with the negative ion allows us to determine a standard by which the positive ion charge can be determined since on occasion the positive ion might be a transition element with a variable charge. So there you have it, how to write net ionic equations.